scriptures, the human body is often referred to as the temple of God. Yet, it is quite an uncommon privilege for any soul to attain this sacred abode that houses the divine, as it is truly a blessing to be reborn as a human being. On several occasions, Supreme Master Ching Hai has spoken about the rarity of this phenomenon. To be reincarnated in the human world is hard. You have to have enough human quality. You have to have affinity with the parents, yeah? and with the society, with the people around which you were born. And very difficult. To be a human, you need some merit. You have done something good in the past in order to be able, yeah? <laughs> to be able to pick a human birth. As a living temple of God, the human body is fully equipped with miraculous wonders that can be awakened in those who are spiritually conscious and have complete faith in the Creator of all life. In Adia, Latin for fasting is the human ability to live without food. Since time immemorial, there have always been individuals who can sustain themselves on prana, or the vital life force. Through the grace of the providence, in Adia, People who follow a food-free lifestyle can draw the energy from nature to nourish themselves. They live on the chi, from the ground, or from the forest, and from the sun and from the air. They make use of all that. Or they live on love, on faith alone. These individuals are known as Pratharians, Solarians, Altarians or Pranarians and they come from all walks of life, from different cultures and all corners of the world. Indeed, the possibilities and miracles in this life as our benevolent Creator has designed for us are endless. We only need to connect within to recognize our abounding largesse as God's children. Supreme Master Cheng Hai has lovingly recommended a weekly series on Supreme Master Television to introduce those individuals of the past and present who have chosen to live food free on earth. May their spiritual stories enthrall you. May hearts be opened and horizons be expanded. We now invite you to join us for part one of our three part program. Elitom bin Yisrael, living a holistic Breatharian lifestyle on Between Master and Disciples. This program discusses the possibility of Breatharianism or living without eating food and is not a full instruction. For your safety, please do not attempt to cease eating without proper expert guidance. Tom Ben Israel has not eaten food for 10 years. He's healthy, energetic, and happy. To help others lead a healthier lifestyle, Ali Tom shares his knowledge of holistic medicine and exercises and promotes the compassionate, animal-free vegan diet. To learn more about his breatharian lifestyle, our Supreme Master Television correspondent interviewed Ali Tom in Ohio, USA. Greetings, global viewer. Uh Supreme Master Television. Today, on the shores of Lake Erie in Northeast Ohio, we are here to talk with Ellie Tom, a breatharian. We have many questions for him, and we would like him to share with us his philosophy on life. What we're doing is bringing holistic medicine, uh, utilizing it in all aspects of our life to bring forth a higher energy that the physical body can feed off of. Feed off of for what? For better health, longevity, and also actually using this energy for all its duties in everyday life uh, without using physical foods. 
Although there are many examples of individuals who have lived food free for years, it's still difficult for many people to conceptualize a lifestyle without food. And to many it, it is, dealing with the educational system and the paradigm shift that humanity has been in. Um, the main reason why a person eats is to gain energy. Person's low on energy, I need to eat. So energy does not just come into the form of physical foods. So when we say I'm bringing a holistic practices that the human being is doing to gain more energy, just like exercising, if a person exercises every day, they'll say I gain more energy back to when I didn't. But now you're actually understanding that the human body will automatically do that when a being puts the, their body into that type of cycle and it can diminish physical foods altogether. What was Ali Tom's lifestyle like prior to becoming food free? What was it that motivated him to seek for an alternative lifestyle? Could you dwell, what was your diet like before you decide to become a breatharian? I was born in 69 and um, compared to the rest of the families around us, they just ate anything the money couldn't afford, from pork chops to chicken and everything else. Uh, soon our family, due to finances, rotated to that type of diet also and thought it was normal. The three meals a day, uh, the eating all types of different foods, whatever you felt like eating. However, the knowledge never came through that that was causing health problems. Now, being in the African American community, <laughs> uh, which lead in almost every uh, aspect of negative health, uh, especially here in the shores of America, that was never brought to our attention that it was the diet that was actually bringing that. Luckily, in his quest for self-knowledge, Ellie Tom discovered an alternative, compassionate lifestyle that enlightened masters through the ages have taught and encouraged. Through the plant-based diet, Ellie Tom escaped from the fate of a lifetime of health problems as a result of consuming animal products. I was fortunate enough also as I got older to run into knowledge that you can change your diet. It's up to you. And immediately when I changed my diet to go from eating anything to a vegan, there was health improvements that took place on my physical being. How did Ellie Tom transition from being a vegan to living food free? Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Between Master and Disciples will return in just a moment. Welcome back to today's episode of Between Master and Disciples. Let's continue with our feature, Ali Tom Ben Israel, living a holistic breatharian lifestyle. Although he was raised on a meat diet, Ali Tom Ben Israel realized the health detriments of consuming animal products. Through his own research and quest for self-knowledge, he met a holy man who introduced him to wholesome and healing benefits of a plant-based vegan diet. As a vegan, Ali Tom began to explore other lifestyles that eventually led him to breatharianism. Now, was this someone who influenced your way of thinking, which caused you to decide to become a breatharian? Well, the main person was uh, Ben Ami Ben Israel. He's a spiritual teacher over in Israel. Now, he's the first one that brought up a holy diet, and it was dealing with eating no animals or animal byproducts. However, even when I got onto that, I rotated to that knowledge right away. I started checking other higher knowledges of dealing with diets. I started finding uh, live foods, you know, no cooking them. Uh, then I started finding just drinking liquids. But then last but not least, I ran into a woman's book on a website uh, dealing with Jazz Muheen, who was a breatharian in Australia. And immediately I ordered that book. And from that day forward, it was like a jack-in-the-box. You just can't put it down. Once I had the knowledge, I started to rotate into it, utilize uh, holistic practices more seriously, and the body actually, over a period of time, started being reconditioned and living off of food. 
What was it like for L.A. Tom to transition from eating food to relying on the cosmic energy or prana for sustenance? Similar to Jericho Sunfire, a breatharian personal fitness guru, the process was challenging. Well, going into this transition is not easy at all, especially in our programming. We're coming from you must eat or you die. You must eat to get energy. So right now you're actually breaking a belief system that not only you believed in your mind, but what the mind does, the body follows. This belief system went into all the cells of your body. So even though the body's doing two things, it knows what it's supposed to do on one level. It's also obeying its government that is under, which is our thinking. So going into this transition, um, there is many discomforts. First of all, all the organs is getting rid of toxicity that's been accumulated throughout the years, which if you didn't make this transition, <laughs> pretty soon it was going to accumulate into a disease, high blood pressure or whatever. Uh, you're going into irritability. And uh, you're also going into just letting the body rest until it can pick up its energy again because it's getting rid of all of these uh, toxicities. So, yes, it is very hard. There isn't a set formula to weather the challenges of the transitioning process. Different food-free individuals dealt with it in different ways. Master Liao Feng Sheng, the Qigong breatharian from Formosa or Taiwan, relied on the practice of Qigong to overcome the difficulties. Jericho Sunfire stayed firm in his resolve to become food free and kept trying until he got past it during the fruitarian and liquidarian stages. For Ellie Tom, to get through the transitioning process, he relied on holistic approaches that included meditation. In order to really help go through this transition, I do recommend, like, for instance, Jazz Muheen said, just take time off, don't do nothing, shut down the schedule, which I believe that too, because that's where I'm at now, where you could just stop when you feel like it, let the body go through its transition. But when you're not used to that, like I said, first starting this transition, there is things that I recommend. First of all, understand where the energy center is at in your body. Start meditating to focus on them. Uh, do that three times a day so the energy can pick itself up. You will feel these practices immediately. Uh, taking long walks, but actually having a conscious walk instead of just walking. Filling the whole body, because the whole body, all the pores in your body are like little mouths or little noses. They breathe. The whole body will start breathing and getting healthier. Um, there's things you should do uh, if you can find Tai Chi, if you can find yoga, breathing energy into a location. That will really help as the body starts making these transitions. So like I said, starting out this segment, uh, you're grabbing all these holistic maladies, putting them all together to what? So the body can start functioning off of a higher energy. That's the main purpose of why are we doing it? You want to be healthy. What kind of changes did Ellie Tom experience once he stopped eating food? Join us next week for part two when we continue with Ellie Tom's story on becoming a breatharian. Now please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for Good People, Good Works. Coming up next right after Noteworthy News. May the providence guide you in wisdom and love. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash BMD